great win for our team. Been a long time coming. We felt all week that we were the better network. We said it on Monday, but we had to go ahead and prove it. We proved it today. Hang on a moment. Hey, guys, I'm trying to have a press conference. Shut up. Thank you. There's some things we did very well today. There's some things we can obviously get better at. We'll give some credit. We're up against some great networks, but very proud of our production team. Our control room put in a lot of hard work to get to where we are today. Uh, hang on a moment. Hey guys, I'm serious. Put away the beers. Who brought a piñata? I thought I said no piñatas. Mommy, is that you? All right, knock it off. Thank you. Mike Lockyer pulled 550 images for the C Block. Fantastic night. Danielle Gons covered three miles running between stores to get props for this bit. When's the last time that happened? And what can you say about Mike Angie? What a good boy. We're going to protect the team tonight, get rested tomorrow. Got a lot of guys banged up. It was a physical fight out there. Go, Fubo. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <laughs> Any questions? Hey everyone, welcome on in to Call It A Night, the sports comedy show where we never call it a night against better judgment. I'm your host, Julie Stewart-Binks, and today we're so jazzed to be joined by NFL Network broadcaster, my friend, Cole Wright, who's coming in hot from oh, L.A. Nice. You, you brought a coat to New York. I, I did. It's pretty cool, but I we did. were just saying, though, that you've experienced minus 72 Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. What is that in Celsius? Conversion, we're, uh, conversion. Uh, jury's quick, quick, quick. out. We're, uh, I think it goes <laughs> the same below zero, and no one will know uh -huh. because no one would Freeze, care. Freezing yeah. cold. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> all right, we're going to heat things up here right. on the show. We're going to be chatting all things Cole, NFL, his career, um, and finding out some of Cole's favorite things in the world. But first, let's dive into tonight's headlines, shall we? Hall of Famer Mike Piazza has agreed to manage the Italian national baseball team. His first move will be to teach the catcher to make his pitch signs a little less obvious. A pizza pie. <laughs> Former Astros pitcher Mike Fires told The Athletic that the Astros were stealing signs during the 2017 World Series winning season. Their most impressive move was during Game 7 in L.A. when they stole the Hollywood sign. <laughs> that would be difficult. For the second straight year, New York Mets ace Jacob deGrom won the National League Cy Young Award. When the Mets organization learned that deGrom won his second in a row, they said two wins in a row. What's that like? They're not good. <laughs> not good. No, they're not good. And uh, now they're in a lot more trouble with the whole Carlos Beltran potentially part of that sign-stealing situation. Mm, I like that like that accent you threw there. It's <laughs> like when I'm not sure really what's going on. Okay. I just kind of talk like Dr. One, one, um, one whatever. Uh, it's great. I've got a master's in journalism. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg announced his candidacy for president, and to make sure he gets every New Yorker's vote, he's going to reach into his own pockets and buy the Knicks. That, would, that actually is a, a great campaign strategy. It's like... Everyone should probably have enough money in their pocket to buy. Yeah, the like Knicks. if anyone just they're buys not, the Knicks not good either. from James Tolan, <laughs> just whatever. Yep. All right, so in Hoops News, the Evansville Purple Aces shocked the college basketball world by having a team. <laughs> The Aces upset the number one ranked Kentucky Wildcats in their first ever matchup. It will be the most disappointing performance by a group of highly touted cats until December 20th. Yeah. Which will probably be so bad that it's going to be good. You know, the cats, yeah. like uh, a movie play, musical. Isn't it? Yeah, like James Corden's going to be in it. And really? Have you seen the trailer for it? It's like people. Is Taylor Swift in it too? Yeah. Okay. Looking like cats, which is, I think, a, it makes sense. a Very fetish apropos, online. Yeah. As opposed to looking like dogs. In a play called Cats. Yeah, that would be that'd incorrect, be, I think. Nuts. But I, yeah. But who knows? Maybe there will be a dog. Uh -huh. 
Uh, a private workout will be held for beleaguered quarterback Colin Kaepernick on Saturday in Atlanta. Several teams desperate for quality quarterbacks are interested in Kaepernick, but are also concerned that he may be too rusty and not mobile enough as he spent most of the last few years on his knee. I can see when I start telling you an NFL joke, like as an NFL Network host, you're just like, I'm just gonna so, sit back here. Right. Like, like, like Tron said on Chappelle Show, one, two, three, four, fifth. <laughs> All right, David Levy is out as the CEO of the Brooklyn Nets less than two months after being hired. The Nets announced that Levy and the organization mutually agreed to part ways. The news came when the team realized they'd already hired Kevin Durant to be the CEO in July. That's funny because it's true. <laughs> because you know Kevin Durant is running shit. And he has a burner account. Uh, yeah, he's, he, does. He, he probably was the one behind mm -hmm. being like, fire, Levy. Exactly, press send. Although Irving was the one that kind of got him to go there. So, mm. who's to say? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield said that loud fans were partly to blame for a false start on a fourth down late in the Bills game. The dog pound quickly apologized, saying, sorry, cheering is new to us. <laughs> also, the only person who's talking is Baker Mayfield. It's like, just stop. That's the headlines. Print it. <laughs> All right, great stuff so far. We're just getting started. We're gonna take our first time out, but stay tuned to find out the right stuff with Cole. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, I'm Amani Toomer, and it's late. I'm gonna call it a night. little Thursday going on here on Call It A Night, and we've got NFL Network host Cole Wright. We worked together at FS1, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day. It was like very short-lived, um, but it was fun. It was. <laughs> it was at the buzzer. Remember doing those? At the those? buzzer. Yeah, uh -huh. oh my God, that was fun. It changed fun. it like every other week. Like, worst, first week it was the buzzer, and then, and then like, no, 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 next week it's at the buzzer. Yeah, and then it was like, actually, it's gone now. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're uh, obviously in better yeah. places now, yeah. right, uh, to our ex. But um, speaking of the NFL, because we got it, we got you here, you know, you have so much insight and yep. experience. We are just discussing one of the biggest stories this week, of course, is Colin Kaepernick sure. holding the workout for NFL teams. There's been some interest. Mm -hmm. How do you think this all plays? out I mean he said that he's stayed ready like I, I saw Michael Silver he issued a, you know a long series of tweets I mean 10 11 12 tweets if I'm not mistaken but he said that you know Colin Kaepernick he gets up every single morning five days a week he works out in the dark with his trainer he stayed ready and you know what they say wow. you, you don't have to get ready when you stay ready and I think that's that's something that that he's done and you know whether or not that, that, that teams are really out there to look at him for what he can bring to the table as a quarterback or not I, I think he can still play this game I mean he's He's not old. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you stay, you stay fresh. I mean, I, I feel like I'm halfway fresh. I'm about 500 <laughs> years older than that guy, and I'm clearly not fresh. So I think he will go out there. I, th I think he's going to, you know, put his best foot forward, and we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's, I think it's for for next year. It's not really right, for right. for this season. That's that's been the word on the street that it's let's let's see what he has to offer for a season ahead. So. But I'm, I think there still could be some teams out here that could, that could use what he has to bring. Right, because even at this point in the season and what we've seen this season, so many big-name mm -hmm. quarterbacks going out, uh, younger quarterbacks coming in, not really being able to handle the pressure or the yeah. load, the timing is ideal for him to show that he can still do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I mean, it, like when, when we see other guys going there week after week, whether it's, it's young guys or, or journeymen who just can't cross T's and dot I's, Will he be that guy? I mean, we, we know there's, especially the way you, when you look at offenses, you, you take a look at Arizona's offense, the way it's run with Kyler Murray, and just other offenses, Baltimore with Lamar Jackson, these guys can run, but they can also throw the ball, and that's mm -hmm. what that's what Kaepernick, we know he didn't have a lot of finesse on that fastball, but he can run, and he can throw, he can get the ball downfield, so I think the, the quarterback position is always evolving, and I think more of our quarterbacks in the National Football League are evolving to look and have skill sets mm -hmm. like a guy like Colin Kaepernick. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll have to see if these uh, owners and general managers are also evolving in their viewpoints in uh, nice. having a quarterback like Colin Kaepernick. Nice. Now, looking at the the remainder of the season, we've had an exciting season mm -hmm. so far, many different ways. What do you? What storyline kind of excites you that you might think come to fruition? I like the Lamar Jackson storyline. I mean, what's going on in Baltimore? I mean, they are a force. I mean, the fact that they you know upended uh, New England and nobody thought New England was going to lose any time soon, especially to that ball club. I mean. 
I, I, it's, it's it's funny every time you sit there and watch Lamar Jackson do more and more things yeah. each and every single week. You know his plate just gets bigger, and you you see the game slowing down. I mean, the, you know he what he run fifty nine yards the other day to, for a forty eight yard touchdown. I mean, he he does so many things and he makes so much look easy. And I would just I'd love to see Baltimore get to the Super Bowl. I mean, who, yeah. who knows if he could get there, especially if they're saying, hey, you know what, Lamar, why, why don't you play wide receiver? He's like, I'm a quarterback, and that's what I do, and he's done it at a high level. Yeah, this and year. just such a quick amount of time since he's like he Patrick was with Mahomes Lobo. light. Yeah, I just, I just love Patrick Mahomes. That <laughs> he, uh, he, he is very exciting he to is, watch too, is. and we'll have to see if the Ravens can. Maybe yeah. they'll be up against the Patriots. He's my quarterback again. in all four of my fantasy teams. Okay, to a fault. I don't know if that's always a good that's thing. That's too bad then, yeah. because wait, Mahomes, you mean? Yeah, Patrick oh, Mahomes. Oh yeah, Patrick well, Mahomes. I had to sit out for a back, little bit. He's but back. I, I mean, they lost. Derek though, but, Carr, though. So uh, yes, right. okay. But we, I asked you. Okay, so we're in New York, of course, mm -hmm. and not as great in our town right now. The toilet boil of the boil of the Jets and Giants was oh. uh, not great. We were just talking about Sam Darnold. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a lot of personality insight. What analogy would you use to describe the Jets and Giants? Well, if it's the Jets, I'm thinking like you know Christmas time right around the corner. It's almost like uh, you know you're a kid. M remember when you wanted like that pair of shoes, like you wanted those Doc Martens, or since oh, yeah. you're in New York, you wanted those Timberlands. Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> see a box underneath the tree or whatever it is, you see oh, like, oh that's a box. That could be some Tims or. Maybe some docks, and you open it up, and it's like a pair of Wolverine boots or, or Colorados. Like, that's not what I want. My mom, dad, like, these are not as cool as Doc Martens or Timberlands, and that's kind of what the Jets are right now. Like, oh, Sam Darnold, like, we're going to bring him in. Look at him from USC. He's got the cool hair and turns the ball over a lot, and that's exactly what you, you thought you were getting some Tims, but you got some Colorados, and you got the off-brand. Yeah. And that's what the Jets are right now. And the Giants, not a whole bunch better. I mean... What do you got not, for the Giants? Not a whole bunch Better. Basically, the same analogy. No. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like uh, it's it's almost like Scooby Doo. I mean, you a Scooby Doo fan? Yeah, of course. It's like you're sitting there, you look at Daniel Jones, and it's like, oh, like that's that's our quarterback. But then you t take the mask off, and it's like pretty much Eli from this season. Uh, like yeah. he would have got away with it yeah. if it wasn't for you meddling kids. <laughs> and you he wouldn't even have to take the mask off because he looks like Eli. And they said, what did they say? He looks like one of the best tweets I saw when they drafted Daniel Jones was Daniel Jones looks like the guy who plays Eli Manning in a movie about Peyton Manning. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts. That's, Sorry. That's Sorry, pretty Daniel Jones. on point. Yeah. Um, when we look at your career, you're at NFL Network. Yeah. You got there and you instantly were like thrown into hosting a morning show mm -hmm. on the West Coast to boot. What's, early. What was that like? I mean, it wasn't that bad. Everyone's like, oh, your, your <laughs> schedule's the worst. I'm like, is it? <laughs> okay, I keep thinking it's the worst because, I mean, we got there like 2.30 in the morning. Oh, my we'd, God. We'd go through a rundown in like about a half an hour, and then we'd have a meeting at 3 o'clock from 3 to 3.30, 3.45. Then you go get makeup, and then on the air at 5 o'clock. And then we'd be out of there at 7.15, and I was, you know, either at the gym or in the bed by... 7.30, 7.40, so I was like, that's the worst schedule. I'm like, I work five hours a day. Like, yeah. Keep yeah, that was a <laughs> terrible a, schedule. Yeah, it's just an odd yeah, thing exactly. going up. Now, you also, speaking of weird schedules, you also did overnights with ESPN. I, I um, did. And that's where a lot of people grinded out. We've had Adnan Verk on the show, yep. Jorge Andres, and yep. what, Max Bradoff, what would you... We, we used to hold it down the Highlight Express, all of us. How, yeah, how yeah. difficult, like, what's the process like to moving ahead at ESPN? Like, it seems like it's a very difficult Well, if, if I knew, I, I would have yeah. maybe moved ahead at ESPN, but I, I, I did not. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but like, what's uh, the process know, like there? Like, and there's so many cooks in the kitchen, that's the one thing. It's, it's, it's the, there's, there's a lot of places, a lot of, there's a lot of different offices, and it seems like this person works on that show, but that person also works mm -hmm. on that show, and it, like, isn't, there's seven days of that show, but there's eight different CPs, and it's just, it's just tough. Like, you know, I, I lived far away, you know, I, I just had, a, I had a little one at that point, so, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's, I had, you know, I was obviously always with the family, and Maybe I should have been in offices more. No, no. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Value that but it's probably better because now I live in California and not in on Bristol. The beach, baby. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry, you're not Bristol, in Bristol yeah. shoveling the right? snow all winter. Exactly. Exactly. You're, you're biking around Redondo. But you've also, um, you know, you've worked everywhere we mentioned FS1, ESPN, Nesson, CBS, NFL Network. Yeah. A lot of, lot of letters. So, What's been your favorite show to work on through all that kind of stuff? Like, what really gets you going? Well, 
I like I like post games, like anytime post game. And I you know for a few years we did at NFL Network. I did the uh, the Monday night post game show, and it was myself and Reggie Wayne and Mike Robinson, James Jones, Maurice Jones, Drew, and mm. every, I mean every week it was just it was fun. And I, this year, just since I'm doing fantasy, I'm not you know, I'm not able to do that because I mean, I'm there in the daytime, and it'd be a long day all the way around. Yeah. So I mean, being there all day on Sunday. And then I mean, if it was all day Monday, but that that was my favorite show. I mean, I, I like doing, I love doing fantasy. I love doing game day highlights with Chris Rose, but you know, doing those post games and as soon as the game wraps, you know, you have about a half an hour of just, just a show, a Phil show and then an hour record show. And then boom, let's get it off the runway and let's go. So well, that's fun. exciting. I mean, having all that experience all over the place, I'm sure it helps you right now at NFL Network and great to be with a league that is so strong, like so many different leagues trying to have their own channels, yeah. just haven't been as successful as NFL Network. But we are going to get into more things cool mm. in a second when we look at all of your favorite things. So don't go anywhere, folks. We're still rocking and rolling here on Call It A Night. Back to call it a night. We we're just discussing how, how it, this how to, is a difficult how to sit on this furniture here. I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah, that's exactly. Trey Wingo <laughs> yeah, said that when yeah. he's here. He's like, do I put yeah. my arm out? Right there, do yeah. I wear whatever? Hold the tree. <laughs> Hold the tree. Yeah, well, it's it's not real, so you can do whatever the hell you want with it. But um, speaking of which, we want to know in our fun game because you you've you've lived a life, you've been all mm. over the place, you've covered many things. Very interesting person. Thank you. We want to know your absolute favorite things in the world. Mm -hmm. And this is our segment, top three all time. I like that graphic. You know what? Like that. that is a great like graphic. That, that like graphic that. was just made yesterday. You know, we have, a, we have great graphics on this show. Do you know who made that graphic though? Jason made it. Oh, it's Michael Lang made it. What a lot of question in your no, voice No, no, Jason, <laughs> we literally have two people who can make graphics, okay. so, and Mike Lockyer makes a lot of stuff, too. Mm. Everyone does a lot of stuff on this show, okay? okay. Um, speaking of which, let's begin with guys that do a lot, quarterbacks. Who are your top three all-time quarterbacks? <sighs> I'll go Peyton Manning. I'll okay, go Peyton yeah, Manning right. three, Here and then go. I'll go Joe Montana. Oh, and wait, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. You want an explanation? Yeah, let's, let's, there we go. Peyton okay. Manning. Peyton Manning. What do you like about him? I mean, he's Peyton Manning. Yeah. I mean, orange barrel reroute. <laughs> Who's I mean, this guy? how much better does it get than Peyton Manning? I mean, he, the, yeah. the, the one thing is, though, he did have some top flight receivers. Not all guys True. had all those receivers. I mean, the guy who could have been my, you know, my, my write in vote for three, Drew Brees. Yeah, very good. Doesn't have all the receivers. And I think a lot of people would be like, Drew Brees, top. Top three. No, he's need to. But if he wins the Super Bowl this year, year then he'll have two. Could have potentially. And he'll have pretty much every passing record. That doesn't you're put right, him top right. three. I Everyone would. Says, I think we'll have we'll have to check in. Okay. Joe Montana. You said. I miss mean, Joe Montana. I know. I mean, it's it's Joe. Montana. I love this one. It's like explain these. Like and yeah, they said Joe Montana too. Will all would, would back in the day would dunk on your head in a game of pickup basketball. And Joe Montana's not very big. I think Joe Montana might be the only man that I have a selfie with. Really? I even told him, when I said, I don't take selfies, but when I do, I take them with Joe Montana. Like, right. Can I get a picture with you? And he, the one he and obliged only. me. All right, well, we will change that today to make sure you get selfies with all the boys all, on this all show. The men, all the men on this show, all we're going to get selfies uh, today. Number right. one, we've got? Oh, that would be Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Tom Brady. The suspense. Yeah. Uh, Tom Brady, yeah. This, that's... I mean... I, mean, I, I used to cover I him in New England. I wouldn't know who else you'd put on this list. And I, I asked Tom Brady once upon a time, over a decade ago, when the TB12 hats first came out. I'm like, Tom, I, I need one of those. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an aficionado, aficionado of hats. I need one of those. And what do you say? I still haven't got one. Yeah, the <laughs> that fact was that ten you years even, ago. Like, talks with him is no, incredible. no, no. It was just on a, on a TV show in that neck of the woods, and I thought maybe someone oh, you would just have tweeted it at him. No, it was on the show. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I said I thought maybe someone would pass the message uh, along. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. maybe Stacey James and the, uh, well, we'll, the media corps for the Patriots. Well, we're, yeah, still I think no we TV need to fire hat. that back up again. Okay, no uh, switching gears a bit. Your top favorite sitcoms. Let's start with number three. Um, are, are you are you on are you on point with this or no? Let's see. Okay, Sanford and Son. I don't think they showed a lot of Sanford and Son in Regina. Yeah, it's, no? I think it's just getting going there. Just getting going. Yeah. yeah. It's a little, a little behind the eight ball. I don't know. I think uh, Julio and Rollo may have uh, seen better days. But uh, how, about, how about number two? 
It's, yeah, it's, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Two. Yes, yeah. This are, is one I can get behind. Are you? Are you? Is, is that a sitcom or is that? Is that? Is that what that's, that's a sitcom? I don't definitely. think so. But. I'm telling these guys, people call me D a lot. I get referred to as D because it's like. Did you see the most recent D Day? No, what happened? It was hilarious. Like D made everybody cater to her that day. She made Frank, with Frank Reynolds dress up as Martina Martinez. <laughs> just go <laughs> watch it. About, just go. Right. Just go just watch it. I think I'm funny, but I'm not. So, uh, moving on, let's go to number Mar Martin. one. Martin, Martin number ah, one, okay. with a bullet, with a bullet, no, no doubt about it. I mean, it, it's, it was the TV version of Coming to America, where Martin played a, you know, a whole assortment of characters and let everybody know his wide range, from Dragonfly Jones to Otis the Security Guard. I love it. And I, how could we forget Shanene? <laughs> You know what? I I got. I, I feel I like I feel like you have not I, watched a whole I bunch of Martin. I Wikipedia this. I feel really bad. Like it's on every single night on like fifteen different channels at two in the morning. Go watch one it. One half of Bad Boys. I do know that because my okay. producer told me that. But, uh, but I mean, bad I was Boys... more of like a Seinfeld kind of girl, or like okay. I grew up with like this isn't a sitcom, but like Degrassi Junior High, or I grew up with the original Degrassi with the, the girl with the, the hair yeah, yeah, snake yeah, spike. or Spike. spike. Yeah, no, but there was a guy whatever. that played the bass with that yeah. little dude who wore like the little fedora. Oh no, the real one, not the Drake one. Not the Drake one. No, 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 no. no. Because no. Drake was a, he was a regular able-bodied kid, and then he got shot at a party, and then he was turned into wheelchair Jimmy. Correct? Is that what that was called? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. pretty much what happened. That's what it was. Um, yeah. So I didn't know that. I just saw an evolution of Drake in a tweet the other day, and I realized I saw him on Degrassi you up and that. walking. That's, yeah. I didn't watch that. I know, and he's from an Africa a neighborhood in Toronto, and so it's, these are His sort of knocks a soul against them. Yeah. He wears a lot of turtlenecks. Still my fave, though, I mean, from Toronto. And there is a bit of a relation to Toronto in this next category, Chicago athletes. Who's number three? I have to go with the Big Hurt. Yeah, our former, co our former co worker at Fox Sports. Yeah, I know, one, our former Frank co worker. Thomas. Yeah. Um, also, yes, played for the Blue Jays. That's why I said that. But. Okay, I didn't that think that, that would be the common thread there. When you think Frank Thomas, you think oh, I do. not the Blue Jays. What but you, you do think, yes. Was, was that, how long was he on the Blue Jays? Uh, it, it may be Three two days. seasons, but one. Okay. Uh, okay, let's get back. Number two. Sweetness. Uh, Walter yeah, Payton. Yes. I thought I was Walter Payton as a child growing up. You did? How come? I, I, because he was fantastic, and I wanted to be just you like did, Walter Payton, yeah. and I realized very quickly that I was not. Walter Payton. Well, you're my, blessed with many great athletes. My Jerry Curl was not as good as Walter Payton's. I didn't have a Jerry Curl, but I, yeah, if I had I one, it wouldn't have been as good as Walter Payton's. But, uh, but number one, uh, no surprise here. Calvin Chiraldi. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's, I'm going to go with Michael Jordan, Michael Jeffrey yeah. Jordan. I mean, yeah. you got all these kids. I mean, what, what movie is it uh, where there's the, the, the gym teachers arguing, a bad teacher with Cameron oh, yeah. Diaz. Okay. And, Jason Siegel's the gym teacher, and the kid's arguing with him. He's like, oh, he's like the, LeBron's the best. He's like, well, where's your argument there? It's, there is no argument. Michael Jordan is the best. He is. He's great. That's I'm a, sad period. that there's no hockey and, players on that list, but I'm not surprised Wayne, there are no hockey players on that list. Wayne Gretzky is like the Michael Jordan yeah, of, of he's hockey. Not he's, from he's got Chicago. more assists than everyone else has points. Yeah. How about that? There we go. How about Hockey that? stats on the show. Just like that. You didn't know Even I knew Even though that. no Chicago <laughs> relation at all. Cool. Thank you. Chris Chelios. You're definitely one of our top 25 guests of all time top on 25. the show. We're not calling it that yet. See ya. Bye-bye. All right. We're cruising along here on Call It A Night. But before we do that, Cole, Every time I turn on the TV, you are there. I, I am. And you times. are going to be on again tomorrow, right? Um, I will be on Good Morning Football tomorrow. Awesome. I'm going to join the gang. Kay Adams, of course, Nate Burleson, Peter Schrager, Kyle Brandt. We're going to have fun out there. I mean, they, that's what they do. They have fun. Yeah, they do. Uh, not as much fun as us, let's be yeah, honest. Of course not. Uh, of course but, not. <laughs> uh, okay, I only have 30 seconds, but you're everywhere. Uh -huh. Make sure you follow him on Twitter and make sure you follow us on Twitter. We are also going to be joined by Darren Ravel on Tuesday, as well Ooh. as comedian Tom Green is going to get weird with us. I'm kind of scared it's about a Tom that. Tom Green show. Uh, yeah, hopefully not. But yeah. make sure to check out our Twitter page over the weekend at Fubo Sports because we want to put your tweets live on the show. But for now, we're going to call it a night. And wherever you call your night, make it a good one. <laughs>